Hello everyone out there, this is Sean Eubanks with this Thursday's episode of the StrainWise Consulting webinar. We have a distinguished guest here that I'll introduce here in a second. I want to welcome you all via Facebook Live and also on the webinar. Today's topic is going to be solutions for trimming bud, hiring contractors versus in-house employees. And I want to go over a couple things real fast, uh, remind you of who we are and why we're here. Um, and, uh, and why you should be listening today. Before we get to that, I, I do want to remind everyone listening that we do have the Blunt Business Radio Show coming out. We will start uh, taping those this week, and I'm very excited about that. So we'll have the, probably the first four shows going and, then, and then get on with uh, having that weekly uh, live for you. So Blunt Business, the Cannabis Business Podcast by Stringwise Consulting. Stay tuned for that. So quick overview of Stringwise Consulting. We are the most sought after a consulting company for applications and management contracts in the industry. We did consult on the very first recreational license of the world. In fact, we worked on seven of the first 10, and we've won more than 200 licenses since the inception of the company. We have a nearly 100% success rate on applications submitted. We're very proud of that. We have nine branded dispensaries throughout Colorado, over 100,000 square feet of cultivation space as well. All right, of course, we're among the top five marijuana companies in Colorado. Forbes has recently listed us as one of the top 50 publicly traded companies as well. We are a consultant to the very first vertically integrated Native American tribe selling cannabis. You may have seen those stories in the news, other publications. That's well publicized. All right, so getting to our guest. We have a special guest here, Susan Tchaikovsky. Is, you've been an entrepreneur since 1972. I uh have. -huh. And this includes five restaurants, international and private alternative healing practice, a health and wellness center. Mm -hmm. You're a minister and you perform sacred ceremonies, including weddings, christenings, and memorials. You also had a natural insecticide company. I did. Okay. Uh, the list goes on. I'll keep going. Your, your, your resume is robust here. Okay. You achieved top national leadership status with an international health company. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you're a business consultant for small businesses, that goes without saying. Uh, you might have seen Susan speaking uh, publicly or on the radio, national seminars and workshops. Uh, she is committed to helping people heal in a way that works for them, as well as helping business owners uh, become successful. She currently operates the first cleared and compliant cannabis harvest and trim company. That is Green Mountain Harvest here in Denver, Colorado since 2010. I do want to brag on you a little bit. You I'm are humbled. I'm humbled. You, you I'm are listening. well. In 2016, you were voted one of the most important women in the cannabis industry, That's and that is alongside Senator Kirsten Gildebrand in New York. So good company there. Yeah. <laughs> well, excellent. Well, welcome to the show. Um, you also were championed as the queen bee of Rex. Uh, best practices uh, by cannabis business executives. You've done your homework. I have. I wow. have. So thank you. Yeah, it's thank really you. nice to be here. I'm, I'm so pleased to be here, and I love what you guys do and how robust you are. Also, excellent. So networking and teamwork—that's what it's all about. Wonderful. Well, let's get started. Sure. We'll start out uh, just a little bit of getting to know you, okay. and and then for the webinar viewers here, we have GreenMountainHarvest.com is on the slides. You can see that. And uh, if you have any questions, you can submit those on Facebook Live. We'll take a look at those. And you can also, per the webinar, just submit them, and, and they'll pop up here for me as well. So let's get started. So tell me how, what was your first experience with cannabis prior to deciding that you wanted to become part of the industry? Not much. Well, not, not since much. the 70s. Not since the 70s. <laughs> so okay. how it happened was a friend of mine called and said, I want, I want to give you money for a dispensary. Okay. And I decided not to do that. Another friend of mine in the industry said, well, you're a healer. You've, you've done organic gardening for 40 years, and you know how to bonsai. This is a harvest company and trim company. And I thought about it for about a month mm -hmm. and decided that I would give it a shot. I, and I'll, I'll retract that. I did see my patients through 35 years and, knew, and saw what cannabis can do for them. So that was mm -hmm. my experience. I mean, that's why I got involved was to make sure the med medicine was non-contaminated, compliant to help patients for mm -hmm. their own healing process. So thank you for circling me back. Yeah, no, wonderful, wonderful. Okay, so when is it that you decided that you wanted to get in the cannabis industry? November 2010. Okay, and is that when someone approached you to purchase or to, to open a dispensary and you declined? Yes, Okay. it is. And so I um, incorporated as Green Mountain Harvest, mm -hmm. and we opened our doors December 2011. I'm sorry, no, 
January 2011. Okay. And we began operating at that point. It was the Wild West. Right. Because there were no rules or regs yet. Right. It was amazing. And so the Marijuana Enforcement Division, for those of you who don't know, that's who regulates uh, Colorado. Were they surprised when you were applying? And <laughs> did you have to explain to them, this is what we're going to do? You know, it's funny because when my lawyer called the head of the MED and said, I have a woman who wants to do a harvest and trim company. He said, oh, harvesting and trimming. We haven't thought about that. Right. And basically, they're much more knowledgeable because I bring a lot of things to their awareness. So not a lot of people had thought about it. I still get calls from around the country, people saying, oh, my gosh, I have to harvest. What do I do? So it's the least talked about subject in the industry, and it's one that everyone has to do. you got to get those plants from cultivation to retail. Absolutely. Okay. So next question, can you tell us about Green Mountain Harvest and exactly what you do? Yes. So we are contacted by Grows um, in Denver, Fort Collins, mm -hmm. Greeley. We have crews in Pueblo and Colorado Springs, and they have a request to bring in trimmers. Mm -hmm. So for many people who don't harvest every day, five days a week, it's hard to keep employees when you only trim one day a week, three days a week, two days a week. So we save them the headache of all of that. So mm -hmm. we do the interviewing, hiring, firing, workman's comp, taxes, unemployment, payroll. We take care of it all. Wow. They send a request to say, I need five people on this day at this time. And okay. at that point, we set them up. I do an intake sheet. So we set them up with those trimmers. I have a supervisor on site. In order to be a legal compliant company, according to Division of Labor, we have to bring in our own OSHA clear tools okay. for that trim day. So we can run up to 14 jobs right now a day. Wow. It's hefty. It's a lot of work. And so you are essentially replacing part of the HR function as well, payroll and things like that. Everything. Wow. My job is to help people be successful at what they do. Mm -hmm. And when you have to have an HR and a payroll and an accountant and all of those administrative functions, interviewing, hiring, firing, it really can take away from what people need to be doing. So we fit a really good niche um, that just we go in and we trim um, and we harvest. We trim wet, dry, wet or dry bud. We harvest first if mm -hmm. they need that. We've rolled joints. We've done bud tending. We've done all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. I want to help people be successful at what they do, and we're very good at this end of it. So we have very consistent clients every week. I could use 20 more employees right now. Well, it's interesting. So when you look at your original pricing, if you're at $17 an hour for a trimmer harvester, well, they might be paying that trimmer harvester $12 an hour, but they've got the HR function on top of that. Exactly. And payroll and accounting. Yeah. And the time for interviewing, hiring and firing, unemployment mm -hmm. comes into that. There's a whole lot that wraps in. So this is about what they spend without the headache. Right. Absolutely. That's worth noting. And so it's interesting when you, when you do that. So basically, you're saving everyone money that you meet with. Saving the money and time and headache. Excellent. You know, it's a t with trimmers, and I love my crew. I have a vision, but I can't do it without them. Right. And so we've worked on embedding a culture and a DNA into Green Mountain Harvest that's about family, that's about spirit, that's about taking time when they need it, mm -hmm. um, and really supporting. We're a very compassionate corporation. So it's mm -hmm. been quite the journey. Do you find that compassion?